live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer and Microchip. Hi, everybody. Hey. And <laughs> welcome to another wonderful hour of Ask an Engineer. It's me, Lady Ado, broadcasting live here from the Adafruit factory. I've got here to my left uh, Mr. Lady Ada, who's on camera control and typing things in the chat. And with us, we also have Rachel and either Matt. Michael or Matt. 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 Okay, start with them. For microchip, that's what the M is for. Exactly, exactly. We've got uh, two special guests today. Uh, they are part of the microchip team that does a lot of the 8 bit microcontrollers you know and love to cram in your electronic goodies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We use them a lot here too. So we're going to do some show stuff. Um, but before we get started, uh, Rachel, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, my name is Rachel Bedore. Um, I'm a product marketing engineer at microchip. And yeah, um, I grew up in Minnesota, so that's a fun fact about me. <laughs> mm, also, stuff with them. Yeah, exactly. I lived in uh, Minnesota for in Minneapolis for a while. Oh, really? And we're, we're, we're tight with DigiKey, and we've yeah. bonded over ice fishing. We've talked about Ooh, this. There you go. Bit, yeah. it's, it's cold there. It was, I thought it was cool. I thought it was like not the temp, not only the temperature, <laughs> but I thought it was it was a cool place to be. It's beautiful. Yeah, the people are cool. Yeah, I lived in the warehouse district. And I spent a lot of time going to the airport because it's a job I had, but um, beautiful city. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, my name's Matt, and uh, I grew up in Phoenix, but I was actually born in Minneapolis, so okay. I'll just jump on the it's Minnesota rule, train. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's we only hire from people born in Minneapolis. No, yeah. that's, not a, that's not true. Uh, but yeah, no, we love makers. I, I grew up all through college watching Adafruit and getting good info from you all, and now I get the opportunity to share some cool stuff with uh, everybody on the other side of the camera today. Yeah, you're okay. on the side of the camera. All right, well, um, welcome. And right now you're both based out of Arizona? Yep, mm -hmm. out of Chandler. Gotcha, and you flew in uh, today? Yeah, we've been here for a couple of days. Okay. We uh, went to a really, really cool meetup last night, Hardware Pioneer, like a quick shout out to them. They did an IoT meetup last night. Oh, we had a really good time talking with people and seeing like kind of the cutting edge of what people are working on in the startup space with IoT. So it was really oh, cool. Great. Okay, well, we're going to just um, pay some bills, do some uh, show stuff, and then we're going to talk about some of the, the things that you sent ahead. And then folks can ask questions um, about stuff in Discord. That's the best place. And is there particular, uh, y'all cover the 8-bit world, yes. right? Um, yeah, we do. Okay. Yes. Um, but you can probably answer all the 32-bit stuff. Right? Sure. Right. I yeah. Else. So if you want to ask questions of Microchip, put in the chat. Ask Microchip We'll questions. get to them. And then Absolutely. we're also going to, of course, have our full show. Okay. Not, so that way um, we're not putting you all, all right. on the spot for the full hour. <laughs> so let's kick this off. Let's do this thing. The code tonight is Microchip IoT. Hey, there we yeah, go. Yeah, we used Microchip Makes in the past, so I can use it again. Um, <laughs> microchip IoT is a code. It's 10% off a native fruit store. Because Microchip's here. Um, all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, or until I remember to turn off the code, everything <laughs> except for Adabox and gift certificates and Code Academy courses. It supports us. An open source hardware company in New York City. Um, you can ask them. We really are here. We really do this. Um, here's some of our staff. We have no loans, no venture capital, so please um, buy stuff so we can <laughs> continue to do this because it costs a lot to do this, um, especially with these high production values. Um, <laughs> as seen on Show and Tell, Lady, we'll talk about folks on the Show and Tell. We had a ton of folks, some JP's workshop, and some Make Code Minute. We have Python on hardware. We have time travel, where we look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Some help wanted, some things from the Adafruit Jobs Board, where you can post your skills or companies can find cool makers. Some 3D printing videos, some made in New York City factory footage. We have a couple new products. We'll answer your questions, and we do all of that on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord, where there are 14,000 of us. People call it a 24-7 hackerspace that they can bring their granddaughter to. That's a compliment. <laughs> Um, we have a couple top secret things. Uh, we'll give away something at the end, all of that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Okay, okay. Uh, Lady Ada, Please. let's uh, first mention if people um, go to their card and add stuff, not only could they use a discount code that I talked about before, I get you buy no, tea, but they get, they get free stuff. That's right, $99 or more, you get a free Permaproto half size breadboard handy for taking your solderless project and making them permanent. $199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental US, our recommended shipping method because it's trackable and insured, and you're gonna love that, especially in the holiday season when it gets very cold out, and also uh, the postal service starts getting a little busy. And at $299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express featuring the microchip at SMD21. Uh, a favorite of ours, a Cortex M0 chip. It has also tons of sensors and LEDs and buttons and capacitive touch, and it can run Arduino, CircuitPython, Code.org CS Discoveries, 
Maker Blocks, Make Code, and as well as other exciting languages like Micro Lisp and Teeny Go, it's a great way to get started learning electronics for beginners and experts. Okay, and for shipping, um, UPS Ground is the best way in the US is trackable. Postal is sometimes a mystery. It'll disappear and come back. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's just how it goes. And DHL International is the way to go, especially now as either one side of the U.S. is on fire, one side's frozen. <laughs> choose a shipping method that you know works out for you. And then if you're in New York City, we do same day delivery up until 11 a.m. Just check out if it's a zip code that's supported. We will send it out to you. All right, show and tell. There was 1.5 billion people on the show and tell. Approximately 10% of the American population Everyone showed up. Everyone was tuning into that. What okay. was on the show and tell this week? Well, we had a bunch of people from the Adafruit side of the factory come by, showing up what they're working on. Phil B from Adafruit West uh, has a preview of our original uh, eyeball code, not the new exotic monster mask code, but the original style, which is still pretty cool, running on the TFT gizmo. That's something people have asked for. He's doing it using uh, pixel doubling, but it still looks really good. Um, he's just tweaking that up, and hopefully there will be a guide soon. Erin is working on these beautiful uh, paper cut lanterns that she did with her vinyl cutter. Uh, there's a circuit playground inside, um, and it can, can be controlled by Bluetooth or capacitive touch. JP tried out the MakeCode DTMF multi-tone capability that uh, apparently is possible to make a DTMF dialer that can call up uh, the Naval Observatory and find out the current time. Uh, people used to do that. Like, I remember <laughs> doing that when I was a kid to set the clocks. So you would call this phone number. That's really weird. Um, <laughs> You know, you didn't have cell phones then. Colin, uh, Mr. Tie Guy, he's got an electronic tie. We're going to show you a video about that soon. Uh, but he upgraded uh, the original Flora sewable tie to a now no uh, solder and also no conductive thread project. So it's a lot easier for people to build. Also Bluetooth controlled. Now Pedro updated their uh, micro Python watch to now a circuit Python watch and also uh, a desktop clock version. Blitz City. Uh, came by. Um, don't forget to pick up her book that uh, just came out uh, on the uh, Asus Tinkerboard. Also, um, she is making a, uh, a stepper driver for a camera slider all in Circuit Python using the M4 Display IO and our uh, motor feather wing, so using a tripler and all feathers uh, to make this cute little stepper controller. Bill B. Uh, showed off his micro joystick controller that will take micro joystick input. Uh, it requires a 12 volt power, so he got like a little boost converter. He showed a couple versions of his project and says it's working out really well. Uh, and he thinks a lot of people in the Able Gamer and uh, um, community yeah, and AT Maker community will. Bill's projects every week, um, so we didn't set out to do assistive technology. It was actually one of the surprises that happened, but now it's one of our favorite. Yeah, Parts absolutely. Yeah. Because not only is, like, Bill is able to deliver things to people that need it, because they have to make a lot of their own solutions. Sure. But the technology's gotten better, so now he can do things like use Python. He can just send a UF2, um, not to not to tie it into a microchip, but that's yeah. been, that has been one of the things that's been really helpful for us, is they don't have to download an IDE. Right. They can mm -hmm. just uh, send over this code, because the, the caretakers really can't do a ton of sure. technology. They're right. busy right, caretakers. Right. Um, but it's a it's a pleasant surprise. It's like we we never set out to, to do assistive technology. Yeah. But when you see the impact, and then the people that do assistive technology, by nature they share. So you see all this stuff. Yeah. So, um, that's one of the things. If if microchip if microchips ever interested, check out atmakers.org. Uh -huh. yeah. um, especially if you're looking to uh, put some folks in the spotlight. Yeah. Um, that's 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 one of the communities that they're they're the earliest adopters possible. Okay. And the other thing is. We're all going to need it. Yeah, right. yeah, not, absolutely. Not if, when. Right, And right. so it's neat to see a glimpse of like, oh, that's an interesting problem you're trying to solve. And it also makes you make better interfaces. Yeah, absolutely. So we also add things with sound now and lights and things on top of a regular interface because we're like, oh, what if you can't see? What if you can't hear right. all these things? So anyways, right. it's cool stuff to check out. All right. Uh, Emily came by with a Circuit Playground program to make code to make uh, beautiful NeoPixels, and maybe we'll come back with a musical uh, tone effect next week. Um, Helen has a tentacle soft circuit she's working on using copper embroidery thread and other conductive materials. Uh, she also made a flex 
PCB cap touch necklace, uh, playing around with uh, different yeah. cap touch materials and cap touch drivers that are sensitive enough to um, detect t differences between touch on the front of the uh, flex circuit and um, her neck behind the necklace. Uh, and also an update from Drew, uh, who was hanging out with his purple PCBs, that the Beagle uh, now has MakeCode Arcade yeah. support. Pocket Beagle can do it. Pocket Beagle, so if you would like to try out MakeCode, what's really neat is, of course, the Beagle, you can connect a screen directly to it, which is a, uh, a, a nice, uh, side effect of being able to use the Beagle, which has so many GPIO pins. JMK has been hard at work porting JM Chaos to Pi Portal to make JMK mobile. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> um, just uh, going through all the different structures, but uh, you know the the Pi Portal has a ton of flash and RAM, so Circuit Python can actually run a whole operating system. So I guess this is this is a really good yeah. thing that we sent him one in the NATO box, and then Sporeball. Uh, came up with Metro Ball. It's a little game, uh, it's first project, which is a Metro Mini with an eight by eight matrix and there's a little ball and you can move it back and forth and maybe next time there will be a game or some other display effect. The yeah. project has just begun. Mm -hmm. All persons on the show and tell, get an as seen on the show and tell sticker. Email support at datafruit.com for a sticker. If you're a kid, have a parent or guardian-like entity do that for you. It is part of our Adafruit live series of shows and tonight, Microchip's here. <laughs> so this was in the making for a bit. I email Microchip probably more than I should. Because I'm like, <laughs> no, it's okay. Is that right? Because I, yeah, because I figured I'm just like, well, like if I were Microchip, I wanted, I would want to know like all the stuff going on. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So I kind of, I kind of just like, who did I email last? And I send over, and this really worked out great. So yeah. before we even get started, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Matt, for coming. Yeah, out. absolutely. We, we've been. This is the first time ever that Microchip is on one of our shows. Yep. How is that possible? Yep. Like, Who knows? That's I, why we're here, to make sure that I doesn't happen even, again. Yeah, so I think we had Atmel. Atmel, we did stuff at one of Atmel's events, and then Atmel no. was acquired by Microchip. Mm, uh -huh. okay. So we got close to having Atmel on our show, but we always want to have... TE on our show. What? Do we have TE on our show? I think we, we, we had... Show. We had... Uh, we filmed with TE. Yeah. So one of the things we're trying to do is outreach to a lot of the, the chip manufacturers Great. and some Perfect. of the component manufacturers, because... They all they want to do stuff like this, but every like it's it's hard to break through like the corporate silos. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like whatever. Like as soon as I have an email address, I'm just like here microchip, here's everyone, and then yep. the net gets cast, and then eventually someone's like, oh that's a, that's that's a cool thing we'd want to do. Yeah. So um, I have a one minute video that I grabbed from the about section. Perfect. Of microchip. Yeah. So I thought I I played. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched enough of it to make sure it was like it was, it was pretty good. Okay. So for folks Great. who don't know what microchip is. This is one of two videos. Go to the microchip about page. It's also in the blog post that I did. Okay. If you want to see the other one, um, the other one is like here's all the stuff we do, and then this one is about microchip. Perfect. So, Great. So, so take it away, whoever made this video. <laughs> Great. Microchip Technology Incorporated is a leading provider of microcontroller, analog, memory, and flash IP solutions, providing low risk product development, lower total system cost and faster time to market for thousands of diverse customer applications worldwide. Headquartered in Chandler, Arizona, with a broad global service and manufacturing network, Microchip offers outstanding technical support along with dependable delivery and quality. Microchip helps design engineers around the globe develop products faster and more efficiently. Customers can access four main service areas from the Microchip website. Questions are answered quickly in the technical support area in a variety of languages. The sample area offers free evaluation samples of any Microchip device. Microchip Direct enables 24-hour pricing, ordering, and inventory. Finally, the training area educates customers through webinars, workshop courses, and events throughout the world. Go to microchip.com for more information. To get footage inside the yeah. Oh, yeah, go. That's what were you saying? Yeah, you go. Oh, it's, it's hard for us to get footage inside the fab, so it's cool to see that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. why I figured I'd play it, because we have manufacturing videos that we do here every week. Because yeah. We can't do tours. Right, um, right. And like you're in the same, like as fun as it would be, I right. uh, can't really do that. Like the, I haven't even toured the fab yet. Yeah, so. the, the, the wafer is like, if you drop one, it's like, whoops, a million dollars. Right, so you think right. really let you in there. All right, so uh, maybe you can uh, reintroduce yourselves yeah. and uh, talk about what you do. Sure. Perfect. Yeah, Rachel, take it away. Okay, so yeah, so I'm Rachel, um, and this is Matt, uh, and we work uh, actually in the 8-bit division, um, but we do product marketing for microchips, so we're familiar with a lot of different products. Um, and lately, we've been spending a lot of time working on IoT stuff. Yep. So yep. yeah, 
uh, we spend a lot of time trying to make sure our customers understand our products and can use them easily, uh, things like that. Okay, how long yeah. have you been with Microchip? Um, a year and a half. Okay. And I've been there three years. Okay, good. Yeah. So these are new hires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fresh. that's why we're here. Okay. <laughs> no. And so um, you put together, you sent over some stuff in advance, but I, I thought I'd kick it off just a little bit as we get going yeah. um, before we have some of this stuff. Like this was the first thing that you have yeah. um, that you sent us. So when you say 8-bit, um, for the folks that aren't like super techie, what do you mean by that? Like why not 16 or 4 or 2? Or, yeah. yeah what, or, or, or what are some of the, the chips, for instance, that they might uh, have heard about that 8-bit sure. chip? Sure. So um, for 8-bit, like AVR, um, if you guys are familiar with that, um, and like 18 mega. Um, and then we also have PIC, which is a common microcontroller. So PIC I think 16, everyone started out with that, too. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Like everyone's like, I got my mm -hmm. That's usually what it's <laughs> Absolutely. Like. And it's just going to be your lower memory products, usually. Um, simpler, both, I think we like to say simpler, both from the programming standpoint, because there's just less memory there to work with. Um, and you're going to be see a little bit more from a hardware perspective as opposed to a software perspective. So um, that can come in a really use, for example, if you're making that, like JMK was making that portable solution, like something that's going to be like kind of portable and is going to sit out somewhere and you want something really low power, sometimes 8-bit is more useful for that because yeah. um, it can do more at the hardware level, which basically all that means is that the, the chip and the different uh, physical components on the chip can run uh, without having to think as much, so that's going to save some battery power and stuff like that. Versus yeah. 32 is going to be awesome if you're doing more of a program-heavy solution. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, for the, this first one, um, I just want to make sure I, I cover everything because yeah. you know, it's important stuff. So, um, is there anything here that uh, you wanted to talk about or, or folks? I mean, FPGA, um, there's Hackaday Supercon yeah. coming out, yeah. and they always have FPGA stuff. So, um, what FPGA things so, are in, in the microchip world? Yeah, we just acquired Micro Semi. Okay. Um, so I'm not an FPGA expert or anything, um, but they have the Polar Fire FPGA is their uh, big, big line of, um, yeah. Uh, so it's it's uh it's something we just started kind of um, becoming big in the FPGA world as a company. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what would you use that for? Um, I so I don't <laughs> I know they go into space. Yeah. Um, and actually, I used to work for um, work with them a little bit at a at one of my internships. Um, for something, it, w it was like it went into a small satellite, and okay. I'm not sure if the actual brand that I just used is the one that goes into yeah, there. Satellite but I know that's part of that PGA, yeah, satellite applications. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of, um, I, I think it's like ra radiant tolerant yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, really, really computational heavy stuff is like t it tends to be what people are using FPGA for. Is so you kind of design your own chip? Yeah, in a sense. yeah. yeah. Got it. So um, that'd be good because you you do, you don't want to make multiple different satellites. Maybe you want to <laughs> make the chip do. The heavy lifting for sure yeah you for have to sure. use it for lots of different things yeah so they can you know you again they can be extremely low power because okay. you can turn off everything well that's mm -hmm. exciting and now does your does your group keep it keep it 8-bit or do they say hey we got we acquired this company now you gotta you gotta work on that now um too. well we try to learn as i mean we like learning about other like yeah. organ is it sorry i get nervous like talking about it because we don't actually you know i'm not no, so no, the way that we're that often, but yeah. yeah no the way that we're set up is that uh obviously microchips a really big company and so everybody like in order to learn how to market one thing well you tend to not talk as much to other groups and so um we've got i think it's like 30 different business units or something like yeah. that everybody's kind of an expert no, that's what at i was something. saying is like mm -hmm. i always run into so many different parts of the company yeah and they're and they don't even know about each other right mm -hmm. sometimes that's why i just like i just add everyone just like, sure yeah. and that's like honestly like as a maker as somebody who's just getting started and this is something that i like had the pleasure of learning somewhat in school and then kind of what we love to do as marketing is I think as a as a when you're just getting started it can get really complicated to figure out like how do I go and move from a from like a feather board or how do I move yeah. from like a development board to actually taking something to market or kind of getting to those next steps of production where you want to slim down to like just the basics it can be difficult to kind of find information on like what's the chip behind the chip so I think yeah. a really good example of that for example is the Arduino like everybody loves the Arduino it's designed really well it's fun to use yeah. um, but you or can't even, really turn that into a production right product. right well yeah. some people do and it's kind of yeah. interesting to see how they pull that off um, but when you can move from that to something that's stripped down to just what I need, you're gonna actually start working with the 18 mega that's on the Arduino or um, different boards that are like that. Yeah, when, um, when Atmel was being used for the Arduino stuff, I, I, would, 
I was trying to talk to someone in Atmel. This was like 10 years ago when I was at Make Magazine. Yeah. I was just okay, like, cool. I was like, the Arduino is a breakout board for your Atmel stuff. And they, there was at one time Atmel didn't have a single mention of Arduino right, on their really? site. And then eventually they're just like, oh, this is like the dev board we that was easier to use than this giant. For sure. Board. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So yeah, we, we look at that, that, that not problem, but challenge too. We did a series maker to market with oh, Digikey. Oh, perfect. Where Lamar talked about taking the Circuit Playground Express, mm -hmm. no, Circuit Playground, yeah. uh, this before we had the Express, Circuit Playground as a, as a design and idea all the way to manufacturing tens of thousands. Awesome, yeah. So that, that video series up. So is there anything else on uh, this that you want to no, chat about good. before we move on to the next one? I actually watched that video series when I started at Microchip. They had me watch the Oh, that's market. cool. Yeah. So it's working out. <laughs> to learn yeah. about it. Yeah. All right, all right yay, DigiKey. <laughs> no, well, we did it for everyone. Yeah. And it's like, well, this is what it's like from a professional engineer. Absolutely. And uh, we broadcasted from Lamore's bedroom uh, and showed here's what, here's what she's working on right now at the second and showed that entire process. And I think, I don't know, we're probably up to hundreds of thousands of, of, of these now, if not close to. Circuit Playgrounds? Yeah. Oh yeah, we sold hundreds of yeah. thousands. Okay, and then you got the what we make. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of these things? Yeah, so we've got, if you kinda, I don't know how to point, but this far bottom left corner um, is a Curiosity, I believe that's a Curiosity, uh, one of our original Curiosity boards. And that's kind of, kind of what we were showing here is a couple of things, one like, kind of going back to that, like, how do I work with the manufacturer question, which is something that I think we really want to, like, hit home tonight, is, like, there's so much that you really kind of, when you come to the website or you try to go get the information, I think oftentimes it's not a lack of information, but it's too much. Um, and so, and we want to provide good information, and so that's kind of why I want to do a quick shout out for things like the Curiosity Board down here on the left, or the before that, or above, above that, the AT Wink, um, I believe is a, either a Wi-Fi or a yeah, I think it's Bluetooth chip, one of the two, probably Wi-Fi. Um, and then we've got over here the AT Sam D21. That's one I think a lot of people are common. That that's on uh, a lot of like dev boards. The, the Sam D21 was one of the game changers for us. Yeah, because yeah. that's on your the Circuit Python is what it runs, correct? That that was when we were able to start making the leap to a scripting language. Awesome. That the world could use. Perfect. That expand the uh, people that could. Uh, do electronics. Yeah. And so that yeah. was that was when we were, that's when I really started saying microchip, uh, microchip you got to do something. So the microchip, uh, I think it's called Currents or Horizons. It's your magazine. Oh, 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 oh. Micro oh. Solutions. Micro solutions. Micro solutions. Yeah. There's like every, every electronic <laughs> component maker has something called Horizons. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, so we did an article and this is like almost two years ago now and it was about circuit, it was about Python on hardware. Okay, awesome. And there was a really smart person who worked on it and they're like, that's cool. And we got it in there. And I think that was one of the things that really put it on the map. Perfect. Cool. Um, it was like, you know, a trade journal, but they're like, all of a sudden you go to this one page and there's more was in this makeup with snakes all over. <laughs> and uh, I love it. Yeah, it worked out. So, um, what other things? Um, yeah. yeah. So, if you see here in the middle, this PIC 16F153. Um, that's one of our newer uh, like new products essentially that's come out recently um, and that's just become a really popular chip kind of if I'm if I'm looking to get started in the 8-bit world um, that's a great way to get started so uh, obviously the ATSAM G21 especially if you're using circuit Python and you're comfortable with that that's a great kind of move to the next step if you want to take something to production if yeah. you find out that you're doing like we're talking a little bit about IOT tonight so taking that as just one of many use cases um, if I want something that's maybe a little bit low power, lower power, and I don't have as much code that needs to run, it just does a few simple things, say like it needs to blink an LED and it needs to sense the fact that the atmosphere has changed. Like yeah. um, there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of cool applications you can do with it, okay. um, but you can move to something that's 8-bit. And then we actually, so one of our key roles um, and why I'm wearing this Microchip Loves Makers t-shirt is because we really do like, like there's such an integral part of the development community that is just getting started. And so that's always the key question that manufacturers yeah. kind of have to ask. There's more beginners than experts. Exactly. So like, how do we We're reach not even them? getting started. Right, right. Uh, it actually is, we're actually behind schedule. Yeah. Like we don't have enough. There's a, there's a very small number of people that can do this. Right, And right. that's one of the things that we decided to do was take all that complexity and how can we make it so someone can do something in five Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, so, uh, Lady Ada, yes. What's your uh, of this uh, cornucopia? <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite thing on here? Because I can't ask them because like that'll be they get, they'll get back and everyone in the office will be like, why'd you say that? I'm in this group. Yeah, but you can say whatever you want. I like you know? the seventy. I mean, the seventy fifty one is the chip I'm working with now. Okay. 
Um, and it's just, it's just got tons of memory. It's really fast and it has all these cool capabilities. Um, that I think what's funny is a lot of them are, are being uh, ported down to the 8-bit. So what's inter interesting is that like a lot of the newer 8-bit chips are taking actually from the 32-bit chipsets and they're kind of like bringing them back. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of things like the DMA and flexible serial ports, these are things that never existed on 8-bit, but once you have them, you never want to give right. them up. Right. Uh, so they're actually being down ported, which I think is kind of, it's kind of interesting to watch that happen. Um, but you know, once you have like 192k of RAM, like there's a lot of things you can do. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I, I think it's it's you know when I was younger, I lived with like you know 64k of sorry 64 like bytes of RAM or whatever, <laughs> or like maybe you just had like 16 registers. But and you can do fun stuff with it. But I think as we're getting into uh, you know a world where there's so much data sure and you know you have to secure internet and you have to encrypt things and you have to do a lot of data processing i like having processing and ram to spare totally. so that's kind of the where i'm at in my yeah. life i've just i've just aged into that yeah no it's a great <laughs> yeah. place to be all right i have one request because maybe there's folks from microchip watching if you were to do another revision of the curiosity board it's very close to being able to have feather headers yeah and you get that entire <laughs> that's feather, true you get that's that entire true. feather ecosystem yeah there's thousands of them now. There's a contest on Hackaday. Think yeah. about all those people you get. <laughs> I know. You know but, we'll have to go back and talk I'm to them. I'm not saying I don't like the 8-bit. I used to I would still write yeah. code for 8-bit chips, and they absolutely have a place. But with the feather wings, it doesn't matter. You can, That's everyone, true. You, we have 8-bit So Particle, too. Particle, they are an IoT company. They have the feather format. Um, SparkFun uses feather format. Seed uses the feather format. So mm. if you're looking for where makers are going, yeah. um, we put out the spec. It's open source, and anyone can use it. Mm -hmm. And now there's thousands. We can't keep track of it. Mm. Um, on github.com slash Adafruit slash awesome dash feather, you can see this crazy ecosystem. So it's just an idea. Totally. Maybe a suggestion okay, box. Yeah, totally. Okay. Let's, Let's go on the next slide. OK. Next up. OK, so this is the stuff that you all do. This yeah. How you enable development. So what do you? Yeah, so this is this is kind of the high level like everything, and then Rachel's going to kind of get us into the meat of the IoT stuff. But yeah. um, so software tools, so we'll go through this real quick. But like Impulab Co Configurator, Visual Programming Tool, um, and basically all I mean by that is instead of having to go find registers and like write a whole ton of code, what I can actually do, and really we love developers that are really skilled just as much as if you don't have any experience because for both if you don't know what you're doing at all you can learn what a PWM is from like a great tutorial on Adafruit or something and then I can move into the MPI code configurator and I can write what my duty cycle is literally type it into a box that says duty cycle and then the code configurator will configure all the initialization code so you don't actually have to figure out how to write to certain registers and stuff like that and then on the more, like we know really advanced programmers who are still using that, not from the perspective of not knowing how to do it, but just because it saves you so much time that you don't have to go write a bunch of initialization code, Microchip Code Configurator will develop it for you. So super awesome kind of visual way. And then Start uh, obviously is very, or not obviously, but Start's a very similar tool, um, but it, it came out of that legacy Atmel. And so Start kind of runs really well with AVR. And then Microchip Code Configurator our MPLab Go Configurator, sorry, I always call that wrong, runs really well with um, uh, AVR as well. Man, you have to remember <laughs> There's so <laughs> many, so many TLAs, so the, many three-letter acronyms. One, I, yeah, the blue is start And like one's Atmel. purple and that. one's you blue. Right. And then there's <laughs> right. the red one. Yeah. Yeah. Starts easy. MPLab Go Configurator, not okay. too, too no, many you're words. Doing good. You're doing good. Um, I, just, I just think it's funny. Okay. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So we got a lot of development boards, uh, third-party tools, so obviously great tools like um, Adafruit and all the stuff that they provide, and we've got a lot of other cool partners as well. Um, our live stream, so we actually do the same thing that y'all are doing here, uh, not quite as frequently. You guys do a well, great job. Well, we talked job. about this. So I, I talked to Rachel and Matt before the show, and I showed like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff with StreamYard. Yeah, and I love then it. With I love what it. We're doing, and I think this is now the dark art. Like you know, you don't want to be the best person at like Wirecast. Like, right. what, like what? Like, <laughs> like what? Like how is that a skill now? And so I, I think it's one of those things where my my goal is to get more people doing this. Totally. I would like to see another show and tell. Totally. That other people do every week, but it's a bunch of work, so that's hard to convince someone to do. Like, hey, yeah. sign up for it every week. Um, but. Uh, if you have any questions about how we do any of this stuff, I'd love to see Microchip do it too. Yeah, absolutely. Please, please do it. And our vision for our live streams is like we were talking about before, everything can get siloed and the information can get siloed as well. So we have some phenomenal people who are like 
at the factory or in the fab yeah. who have just wealths of information and no microphone to kind of get that information out. And so what we like to see the live stream as um, is giving the right people the microphone so that they can really tell the world and start to explain to people at any skill level how to do things. So we have great live streams on security. 32-bit uh, just came on last time and talked about graphics and just gave yeah. a really cool kind of introduction to graphics. Um, next week we're doing one on touch. So capacitive touch, obviously another, like uh, what was her name? That Helen, I think, had that really cool yeah. uh, necklace. So like kind of how do I get started building that very first touch button and what does that look like? Um, so lots of cool stuff in the works for that. Um, actually, we've got Mauser coming on on January, and they're going to be talking about um, kind of their IoT platform, the horticulture demos, if you've seen those online. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're going to be talking about it. So just a lot of cool stuff. I get really excited when I talk about we it. We have, here, I'll put this in the suggestion box too. So we did a partnership with 4-H. Okay. It took forever. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it took for, I, was in, I was a 4-H kid. No way. Um, that's awesome. Y'all were from Minnesota, so you know what 4-H yeah, is. Yeah, I know. And yeah. Arizona. Arizona yeah. is huge on that. So um, I raised uh, silky chickens okay. and Holland Lops. Okay. Cool. And so, like, I always wanted to do something with 4-H, so eventually we had Circuit Playground. Okay. And we're like, okay, let's work with them. And we got a contact, and they said, oh, you can put the logo on it, but you have to apply. So we applied to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, because it's a different type of trademark. We got it. We have a green board that has the 4-H logo. Oh, no way. It has a microchip chip on it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, here's the hard part, and maybe you all can help. So there's someone at Microsoft who's in charge of philanthropy that's on the 4-H board. Okay. There's Google who just gave them like a couple million dollars. Okay. There's all these entities that are around 4-H. Sure. They're not getting electronics. Hmm. Google, okay. like, I don't want to, so here's, <laughs> they did, they, they, the thing they came up with was like a beach ball. Yeah. It, so like, we're, we have electronics that can get in the hands of kids. Yeah. That it's all sensors and, and, okay. and solar cool. power and stuff like that. So if you could put that in the suggestion box, like, right. like this is like a super story. Yeah, even, even, absolutely. Uh, we'll email Digikey and Mauser and Arrow and everyone. Yeah. And uh, I know Digikey will do something. So maybe that's something we can like get all these companies together. For sure. Wouldn't it be great if every part, you're in 4-H, you get electronics. Yeah, it sounds like, like a great idea. It would take 10 years to make everything better because everything is kind of crummy right now. But after 10 years, it would get better again. Right, but, right. But we just have to teach people. So anyways, maybe put that in the suggestion. Yeah, yeah. So we'll this okay. is great. All right. Um, and so the rest of this stuff is, I, the only other key thing that I want to highlight here, um, we got a great YouTube channel that not just... 8-bit, but a lot of uh, business units put down a lot of great content. Uh, they released a couple videos a co like a year or two ago, like what is FRAM, what is, um, f well, what was Flash, what is RAM, and then they did a couple of the memory group, did like four videos That's that good. are just blowing up. That's, That's like, really, really good basic level, like for somebody just trying to get started. Um, we got a lot of great tutorials on there, talking about IoT, talking about driving motors, like lots of cool stuff. We just did a uh, really cool video where they took one of those uh, vibration plates and did sand on it with the different frequencies going through it oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. demonstrate kind of what a numerically controlled oscillator was. Yeah. So a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and then we do, and we're actually going to be out in Boston uh, next week. So if you want to come by, say hi. A Harvard Pioneers is doing another thing in Boston oh, cool. that we're going to go to. Um, but we're headed back to Boston in the spring to do what we call effortless de design events. And so it's microchip.com forward slash effortless design where Rachel and I come out and we basically walk people through how to do different cool things. So next class is gonna be on IoT. So kind of Ra Rachel's talking about today, but in a lot more depth. It's yeah. a four hour class and you get security, you get wireless, you get microcontrollers. So it's a really cool uh, way to actually get we some in-person time. just did a uh, breakout with one of the microchip secure oh, elements. Cool. So if you want before. Yeah. Oh we, yes, uh, I saw that, yeah. 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 So um, here is the IOC slide. So this is all you. So this is this is this is your your main jam. Um, yeah. So this is uh, we kind of wanted to show the ecosystem side of IoT um, and how it kind of all works together. So we have, you could have something like a like a 32-bit or an MPU, something with the more processing power at the edge in the same ecosystem as an 8-bit microcontroller, um, as something really simple. Um, and then we also wanted to show that the same ecosystem might include connectivity like Bluetooth or LoRa, and it might also have Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Um, so kind of all working together. And we wanted to emphasize that for our products, that we're not tied to a single cloud provider. Um, so we'll do demos with different ones, but we are agnostic. Yeah, to we had to cloud. show that too. So we have Adafruit IO that works yeah. with any, any devices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you all probably use that because it's not locked down to the specific hardware. You can use an ESP8266 or you can use any of the, um, what's the name of the curiosity board shape 
thing that the IoT board that you have? Is that is it the Curiosity board? Is oh, that AVR IoT? IoT? And yeah. The big the, IoT? Oh yeah, and this is um. So oh, this let's is go to the overhead real quick. This is your this is the board that, that you. This use, is right? the Can this is the up and coming one oh, that you guys are going to be really okay, excited about. Okay, so this is oh. um, up and coming. Not yet released. It won't be for. A this is not months. out yet. Don't ask. It's not out yet. Okay, wow. Yes. Is, I didn't know you were going to come in with breaking news. I didn't, I didn't, have to uh, we didn't either secret. until two hours ago. Oh. But um, so this is a SAM IoT. So we have this released um, for like PIC and AVR IoT. Okay. So the uh, the PIC is a 16 bit and the AVR is an 8 bit. Um, but in a couple of months, you guys will be able to buy a SAM IoT. And what this is um, is it's a we call it it's part of our strategy: smart, connected, secure. Um, so it has a Wi-Fi controller, yep. the microcontroller, yep. and a secure element, and yep. they're all pre-configured for a cloud provider. I'm not sure which cloud provider <laughs> this will be yet. Um, but uh, and then on the other boards, they have like a temperature and light sensor, and then it's super easy. It's, it's like almost 30 a seconds. feather. Very yeah. close. It's feather-like. It's, it's so feather -like. close. Well, they clearly looked at the feather one. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no the power things on the, the side and the rails are way. so close. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't confirm nor deny. It, <laughs> yeah, it was no. actually based on the feather. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know what it looks like. And then, and then, what is what is, the, what is, the, what is this? The one dimensions right here? are the same. Um, that's yeah. a Wink fifteen hundred. That's a Wi-Fi it. controller for Got two point four. And games. then, what chip is that? On and there? this is it's the Sam D twenty one, I believe. Okay, yeah. so potentially someone like us could put Circuit Python on it. Potentially, or yes. someone like y'all, you should do it. <laughs> yeah. So Sony, yeah. Sony decided to. Um, they have the Sony uh, presence. And they did Arduino, and then they're like, you know what? We're going to totally do. Um, now let me go back to us since. Uh, yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, it's dead air there. Like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's snowing outside. Um, well, that's big news. So, is this is this public anywhere online yet, or is this no, like? No, no. And I, I'm not really sure. If you're a sip Oh, don't sure worry. No. But this isn't live. Don't worry. Oh. <laughs> no, it's no, live. no. Our, okay. um, but our, yeah, we wanted to share with you that we're doing that because we know you guys really like that chip and it's yeah. We have a lot of code for it. It's like once you have code for a chip, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. you're locked in a little bit. Yeah, and so um, what these we've been doing with those is they're pre-provisioned with the keys from the cloud provider that we partner with. Yeah. So like for the AVR OT, they're with Google Cloud pre-provisioned out of fab. You have the keys. Yeah. Everything's pre-configured because we found um, people have a lot of trouble. Like a lot of our customers have trouble. Prototyping with security, um, it just adds a layer of complexity. Yeah, because you have to, if you start from scratch, the sites are impossible to use. Right. Mm -hmm. And then right. you're like cutting and pasting big, giant <laughs> chunks of numbers <laughs> in your ID, and it's just right, like, right. I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. And do you want to yeah. give go in a little bit, like when you say pre provision, what does that actually mean? Um, so it means that they, they put the private keys for the cloud provider on the chip, like in hardware um, at manufacture. So when it actually ships to you, it already has it. Like nobody knows a private key. Got it. Um, you can't know it, and so it's um, like really secure. It's stored off chip too, so it's like stored in its own little thing. Um, it's like kind of a they say like kind of like a black box that's stored off the microcontroller. Okay. Um, and then I guess at a high level, basically the I mean you guys have a breakup board for the same yep. chip, but yeah, it just sends back kind of like a yes or no, um, and when they do the authentication. Cool. Well, if you don't get a chance to do a feather version, you can you know you could put a you can make an adapter if you want to do stuff. That's that's easily that's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then this last slide before we keep going, um, you've got I, this might be like the you collect these at the on the quest. You got a, you got a shield, <laughs> yeah, these are the pokey light, badges or the micro badges and this robot. No. And they're like, well, I'm Team Shield. Yeah, right, so this, right. You're Team is this Blue the, Dots. Is this the, is this the team Connect. The triad of things that you'll do with this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is like our smart connected secure. So we're trying to do more and more with this, where we have a microcontroller, a secure element, and some sort of connectivity module, whether that's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or anything. Um, and I also want to do a little plug. This is really early, but last year we were together in IoT Week. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be doing that again this year. Okay. Um, hopefully you guys want to collaborate. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, All right. I can't so, go back on it now. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be March 9th through 13th, and I actually did. We just put a registration page up, so I'll post it in the comments on this video. Okay. Um, so people can register because it's not a. We literally did it today, so it's kind of. It, it doesn't have a cute URL yet. Okay. But um, yeah. So it, um, if people are interested, we're going to be doing it. I think we'll, our content this year will be like even more useful and better. Oh yeah, and it's really exciting. Yeah, we have a lot of really cool stuff lined up, and there's a lot of different ways like we can collaborate together um, for that camp uh, the event. Um, so it's a digital event again. It'll be like live stream event, um, yeah. and the second week of March. In March, there's also the Open Hardware Summit here in New York. Okay. So if you want to come back. Okay. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Can't say no to New York. Yeah, mm. come back. And uh, the Open Hardware Summit, um, Lemur is known for open source hardware. Yeah, and, and super there's important. There's a bunch of pioneers that will probably be there again. This is the 10 year anniversary. Okay, wow. So we're, we want to go just as like attendees and just like, okay, sure. cool. Like, this is neat. Like, what are y'all up to? Yeah. Um, there's some cool companies like um, Electronic Cats based out of Mexico. I'd like to yeah, see them. So, like, I mean, they use a ton of microchip <laughs> stuff. So I think it'd be neat for y'all to come out. Yeah. Cool. Again. Let's so check maybe it out. we can okay. coordinate that with that event. Yeah, definitely. As well. Okay. Well, that's our that's our microchip interview section. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for dropping some um, new stuff. Can we go back to the overhead a little more, and maybe you can show this a little closer? Yeah. So this is world, Let's get world her in premiere trouble. of this. <laughs> and uh, well, you know what I like is I, I think every hardware uh, and component manufacturer and chip company should come here and release their new hardware. <laughs> <laughs> because wh where where else are they going to do it? Seriously. Yeah. Like seriously. really, like, we got else? a lot of eyes out there the right now. On the back, I think there's nothing. Yeah. It's just okay, same market. Way. Interesting. No, I, I mean, pin out and stuff like that. Yeah, so. this is cool. But All yeah. Right. All right. Well, thanks. You know, well, you thank you guys so much for inviting us. Seriously, here. seriously, it's this is an honor. I think next time someone wants to come on the show and give you like, what new stuff are you bringing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, Lamar, you want to um, keep doing the rest of the show? Uh, what do you, what do you want to do? Let's you do it because we can just go to nine fifteen, and we can get the rest of the show done in half an hour. Okay, we'll switch through it then. You want to do it? Well, okay. <laughs> you don't want to, you want, you I, it's very, I think we can, I think we can get through yeah, okay, half let's an do hour. It. Okay, yeah. let's do it. All right. So, um, there's a lot of stuff. Thank you, Microchip. Um, and don't forget the code is Microchip IoT. That was a pretty lucky guess for me for the code. <laughs> um, I'm glad I uh, guessed it. Uh, Jump Park shows tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Here's a little bit of preview of what he'll be showing tomorrow. And in addition to um, the full hour that JP does, uh, every week we have a Make Code Minute. So take it away, JP, this is last week's. I want to show you a little sort of minute to win it uh, game timer. So there's a lot of these games uh, that you can play, especially with family and friends around the holidays, uh, where you might want to have someone answer a question first based on trivia or who knows what you're, what you're up to with these games, but a lot of games where you have to have someone buzz in or raise their hand first. And so what I decided to do was build a little timer using a Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. And why don't we uh, have a look? I'll demonstrate it first. So here you'll see I have an alligator clip attached to one of the capacitive touchpads just to kind of pull this off and away into the side of the boards. When I press this, it'll run through. You can hear it beep. Okay, and now it's ready for one of these two buttons to be pressed. So two people on either side or with a finger ready on the button, whoever hits it first, it's going to light up to their color. So the person on this side with the button A gets red, and nothing else can be pressed at this point. So once one's buzzed in, the game locks it out. And now I'll press the alligator clip again. Give it a second try. And now this player uh, with the B button, if they press it first, it goes to blue. Uh, so the way this is done inside of make code, uh, it's fairly straightforward. So I have a couple of variables called ready and started. And it, at the beginning, we are ready, but we haven't started yet. When you touch the A4 capacitive touch pad, it checks to see, has the game been started? And if not, then it can proceed forward. And this pre prevents double taps of the start button. Uh, and then when we do start, we flip that value to true. Uh, and then three times we run through a little bit of animation and play a tone, beep, 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 and then beep is the high one that ends it. Uh, and then we set the ready state to true. And this variable, when it's set to true, uh, allows one of these two buttons to be pressed. So there's this if loop that says, if ready is set to true, then we can go ahead and pay attention to what happens when the buttons are hit. And then depending on which one is pressed first, we set the ready state to false. So the other person uh, with the other button can't weigh in at this point. We set the pixel color to the color for that button, and then we set the started loop to false. Uh, and so that'll allow us to reset it after the next time. And so that's how you can create yourself a little game timer using the uh, Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. And that is your Make Code Minute. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, okay. thank you, JP. And since it's a uh, microchip theme night, that's one of the other things because we moved to the SAMD chip, we were able to uh, do things like make code. So I don't know if you've ever tried that out. Um, check out makecode.adafruit.com okay. or cool. uh, Microsoft's Make Code site. You get this entire cool block editor. Oh, sick. And then you just drop the, the UF2 on there. Microsoft open source the bootloader okay. for this stuff, and it really worked out well for lots of makers. Okay. It's time for Blinka, Blinka, Blinka. Yeah, Python on hardware. All right. So every single week, we do a recap of all the news. This was... Um, we do a mailbag section. This is just like a nice comment on GitHub, which normally isn't used for nice comments because it's the way comments have evolved to. Um, but we do a good job with comments because uh, we want people to write code and, and contribute. So uh, Alex was really nice. Alex said, before I go create an issue, I just want to say this here. This is rad. Makes all sorts of things super easy and awesome. I love it and thank you. I didn't consider that prototyping stuff could be more rapid, but this is just lovely. So this is uh, using Circuit Python, and that was one of the things that we noticed that people are able to prototype things uh, very instantly. GitHub did their um, state of the GitHub, GitHub universe, all sorts of stuff. So Python is the number two language; it is shooting up. If you look on the chart there, it is uh, surpassing many, many languages. This year, C Sharp and Shell climbed the list, and for the first time, Python outranked Java as the second most popular language on GitHub by repository. Contributors. So that's why sometimes I send emails to Microchip and I'm like, Python on hardware! <laughs> Python on hardware! And, uh, and sometimes I get replies. <laughs> uh, because I think that's where, that seems to where it's going. It seems to be, it's, it's now um, taught in every school. It's the national programming language of France. Um, really? The US does not have a national programming language <laughs> of yet, but maybe we will one day. But if you were to go by what's being taught, it would be Python right now. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I love Python. Some other stuff. This is uh, from Helen. Helen posted this up on Twitter, and then Helen was on our show and tell. This is an embroidery systems company called Z, uh, SK, or, yeah, ZSK tech, uh, Technical Embroidery, and this is Circuit Playground Express, and you're able to use this as a piano. This is one of our friends from DigiKey, and this is, I believe, an Iron Man costume and it uses Circuit Playground Express and it will of course open up on command. This is uh, one of the cool projects that help you breathe and uh, I could probably use this sometimes <laughs> where the you, you breathe and it, it helps you pace your breathing correctly and it uses the Wim Hof, we've just heard about that over the weekend, um, breathing and it will get you to a calmer place. I think they use this on students, apparently, who are anxious, because um, that's part of being a student. Uh, this is one of the new boards that is on circuitpython.org slash downloads. We almost have 90 boards all together. And uh, this is from Thea. And you can check this out. It's more bomb. It's a, another Eurorack thing. There's an entire world mm, of Eurorack Yeah, she's like there. synthesizers. Yeah. Um, this is a Circuit Python badge that was made, and it was made for conferences. This person is like, I want to have my own badge that runs CircuitPython and has all these extra things on it. So they were able to use our tutorials, they even put the little accessory at the top so you can put other things on it and more. This is from Arturo. Arturo is making more boards. This is the Serpente. You can use uh, different types of USB. And uh, Arturo posted up one of his first reviews. And I thought this was neat to read. This is from Ben, who is a customer, bought it from Tindy. Perfect little circuit. Python controller. This is a great little controller packed with tons of stuff in a tiny package. It was really easy to get up and running. It's powered by CircuitPython. It's a generous 4 megabyte of flash. Just plug it in, save a file to a drive, and your code runs. Um, you can read the rest of it, but I thought that was uh, said even better than we can say it. On Hackaday, there's a bunch of things going on because there's a feather contest. So this is a, it's called a, a Picardo. Um, and I think on the other side it has John Luke Picard, but this is a Sam D21 with Circuit Python on it. Um, I didn't plan the show with all this microchip stuff, but um, <laughs> it's working out for your team. And uh, more students are using Circuit Playground Express, including Circuit Python. Here's um, some students. You can check out which fruit schools. Drum party. Yeah, they're doing the fr fruit jam party. Um, the latest issue of Micromag is out. This is a community-made Microbit magazine. You can download it, you can buy it, and you can also share it. 
Matt posted up a bunch of MicroPython news. If you want to use MicroPython with a solder-free kit, they have information and more available. And here is a photo from the workshops. If you want to get involved, check it out. It's all on Adafruit Daily. You can sign up for the Micro, uh, sorry, the Python Microcontrollers newsletter. You can also check that out on our site. And that is the cornucopia of, uh, of, it's uh, fall. of yeah, of Python on hardware news this week. Snakes and a gourd. Okay. Let's do time travel. All right, um, every week we look around um, and see what's going on in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Starting in two days is Hackaday Supercon. So that's going on. Every person at Hackaday Supercon has one of our, once again, microchip power badges. Um, this is our edge badge and it does machine learning on it and you can change it so it's a name badge or it can do uh, machine learning demos or it can do gesture recognition or it can do the sine wave machine learning mm -hmm. demo so this is really neat this is one of the ones that um, we thought it'd be cool for microchip to have at events that have if you want one before you we can give you one um, and speaking of that uh, arm has an aiot dev summit coming up pretty soon it's december 2nd and 3rd and guess what's going to be there yep you guessed it this mm -hmm. is the, the that badge as well and this has um a dem, uh, the machine learning demos on it. We call it BrainCraft because machine learning and AI was just hard for people to remember. And uh, BrainCraft is an easier name. <laughs> and we called it Edge Badge since it's machine learning on the edge, which usually means that it doesn't need an internet connection. So you could do some pretty advanced um, uh, voice recognition on things like this and you don't have to worry about it going to the cloud. TensorFlow, coming for your chips. Yeah. All right, Help Wanted, um, we have a jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com. I'll mention it to our microchip friends. If you ever have any job openings, have someone from the employee resources, human resources post there. There's a pretty like one-to-one -one hit rate. If you post up a job, you usually Great. get a candidate. Um, we approve, Lamar and I personally approve each one because all the jobs boards are out there are, are scammy. Sure. Um, so this one came in. It's a sensor engineer, part-time or full-time at the NY University School of Medicine. So huh. check out that job at jobs.adafruit.com. And if you're someone who has skills, you can also just post up your skills. All right. Okay. We're an open source hardware company. Yes. Um, and we wanted to celebrate one of our favorite makers. Uh, Bunny Wang is now on GitHub sponsors. Mm, and new GitHub, thing. Yeah. GitHub has this cool thing where if you're a developer, you can apply for it. And then people can sponsor you just like Patreon. So Bunny is responsible for the Chumbi for any TV, for the, the open source laptop. laptop. Um, hacking the Xbox. Yeah, hacking the Xbox, doing the, the Shenzhen, Guide to Shenzhen book. book. Yeah. Yeah, so if y'all, um, if you talk to talk and you're at like an event, you're like, man, it'd be really great to like support Bunny, but you know, I just didn't need an open source laptop. Now you can do it. You can just pay directly. People, and I think that GitHub is matching They're doing matching right now. So your money goes twice as far. Yeah, so. So go sponsor Bunny. So that's, that's one of my only pet peeves is when people say, oh, I would support them, but shipping costs money. I don't want to get, I would, if I could just give them money somehow. Now they can't pretzel themselves into those excuses. They actually can do it. So if you think about all the cool open source software and hardware out there, um, we're here because of Bunny. We all are. He is one of the pioneers. So um, sponsor Bunny on GitHub. Yep. Okay, the Take Flight the Feather contest, sponsored by Hackaday, Adafruit, DigiKey. It began on November 1st. Sophie over at Hackaday said it got the most entries, the fastest of any contest. Yeah, we had like 11 entries in a few days. Right now we have Good 19. stuff. There are 19 entries. Octo sensors, LED sensors. These are all those feather wings I was talking about before. Okay, cool. You would get all POE. these. POE. You get all these. Batteries. So there's all sorts of categories. Weird, assistive tech, everything. And these are just the entries that came in. Yeah. And I think, yeah, all together there's hundreds of different uh, feathers and feather wing. Okay. Uh, ones that are already out there and then all of the, the designs. So you're, you know the board's really close? Um, so people can enter, just go to hackaday.io. Um, more, can you go to the overhead and maybe um, Matt or Rachel, can you hand, oh, uh, hand that? This is how many days are left. We're using a Pi portal to keep track of this. This is online and it's telling us there's 48 days, six hours, and one minute. Soon That's to be zero using. minutes. And that, you know what that actually does? This is, look, it's, like, it's kind of like this. We have an API. It's smart, it's connected, it's secure. It is. Yeah. So I get to use that patch. <laughs> um, I'm the blue dots this time. Yeah, all right. So, Lady Ada, we have 2,055 guides on learn.adafruit.com. 
Okay, we'll go What's through these on the big board fast. Display? We've got a uh, new uh, quick start using Adafruit e-ink e-paper displays with CircuitPython. Uh, we've uh, written drivers for a bunch of e-ink displays. Maybe you want to use them with CircuitPython. No soldering is even required. These are plug and play feather wings and shields that let you get started with tricolor um, displays. And we have CircuitPython code to add text and graphics. So you can just drag and drop them. Yeah. Uh, we have a desktop or laptop TFT sidekick, FT232H. So what's neat about this is you can run CircuitPython libraries on your desktop computer with the FT232H and then um, have that display on a, a TFT. In this case, it's a ILI9341 uh, 2.2 inch. And we show how to use matplotlib to display direct data from your computer onto the little sidekicks. It's kind of an interesting idea because you're writing circuit Python library code, but the hardware is being driven by your PC. Yeah, y'all like this. So one of the things that was uh, kind of uh, challenging is, you know, the Raspberry Pi came out. So, that, you know, it's a price point that's hard to beat. Sure. Mm -hmm. But you get to run Python on it. And so it's like, well, what if you wanted to do microcontroller stuff and then you wanted to go to a Raspberry Pi, or you want to go to a BeagleBone. Oh, yeah. You're just okay. in a nightmare land because they're, each one is different and you can't right, do it. So what right. we did is make sure that CircuitPython runs on all those. Oh, okay. So now we're at the finish line, and you can do things like um, take that same exact code yeah. and then just plug in this board, and that's coming off of PC, Mac, Linux. So you Mac, can have Linux. sensors that you, you drive direct from yeah, the computer. There's so no well, microcontroller at all. You can run that on any CMD, oh, or no you way. can run it on your computer. So that we wanted that to cool. do write code once. Cool. You know the Java promise that never happened? <laughs> that, was, that was it. Okay, what else you got on the big board, Lady Ada? Um, we also got a musical walking stick with Circuit Playground. This is a project uh, for Evan, who wanted to cosplay as Darth Vader, uh, but he has this cane that he uses to walk. It has a capacitive touchpad on it uh, and a really cool uh, Empire laser cut piece. Yeah, um, I have uh, to actually play this. So, uh, Evan, uh, he got injured. But we're trying he's, to. He's make, better. He's getting better. We're trying to make his, his injury as much fun as possible. So um, he wanted this, and so we, we built this with him. Okay. Uh, so it plays uh, sound clips, and in this case, it's the Imperial March. We've got the no solder LED disco tie with Bluetooth. We've got a demo video for that as well, showing how you can now Bluetooth control uh, your NeoPixel tie. This was uh, one of our favorite Flora projects, actually one of the projects that helped dictate how the Circuit Playground was designed because I wanted to make sure that this was a project that you could build. Uh, so check out Colin jamming out with this great looking tie. And of course, all that code is written in CircuitPython now, so it's really easy to modify. We've also got a Bluetooth TurtleBot with CircuitPython and Cricket. Did you know you could plug your Circuit Playground Bluetooth on top of a Cricket board? Well, until last week, it wasn't possible, but this week it is, because we fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can plug it in and then write uh, Bluetooth controllable uh, robot designs. And in this case, we took our popular little uh, rover and uh, dressed it up like a turtle, since last week was uh, a Circuit Playground Express uh, turtle logo. Um, but this time it's a robot. Maybe you okay. can drag a little pen with you. And there's a guide for this week. Yep, all 2055. We'll have more this week. Okay, we have some factory footage from Adafruit. Take it away, factory.
City factory footage without a time lapse outside the window where the picking places go. This one's epic. Jeez. This might be the beginning or the end of a science fiction movie. There's also <laughs> like some construction going on, and I know we're trying to take a long time lapse. Yeah. Of Both the... Disney and Google have bought some real estate around here. They're going to demolish it and reconstruct it. Yeah. That's cool. All right, um, 3D printing. We've got a 3D printing video from Noam Pedro, which is the Circuit Python watch, and then yep. we have a sped up. So we'll do those back to back and we'll see okay. everybody on the other side. See you in a couple minutes. Hey, what's up folks? In this project, we're updating our OLED watch. We've upgraded to the Feather M4 Express and updated the code with Circuit Python. With this project, you can display the date and time to make a watch or a desktop clock. Circuit Python makes it really easy to display text on a Featherwing with the OLED display. You can install Circuit Python by heading over to the website and downloading the firmware. Select the hardware you're working with and grab the latest version using the links. To get the new features, be sure to get the latest firmware. Get the board into the bootloader mode by double pressing the reset button. The board will automatically restart and load as a flash storage device. You only need to grab the required libraries. These reside in a folder inside the root of the drive. To set the initial current time, you'll first need to set the time manually. Update these values to the current time and date, and then uncomment the lines once it's set. Be sure to check out the learn guide for a walkthrough and learn how to use the libraries. For the watch build, you'll need to configure the headers in a specific order. Start by plugging in the battery to the Feather M4. Then snap the RTC module on top. The OLED feather wing can then be placed on top. The whole stack fits inside the Ninja Flex printed case. Insert the tabs from the two bands through the slits on the side. The band features a little nub for press fitting through the holes on the band. The end can then be tucked underneath the band. To make a desktop clock, you'll need to install hardware to the 3D printed stand. Install the standoffs and use hex nuts to secure them in place. The Tripler Featherwing is fitted on top and secured with machine screws. You can snap on the Featherwings in whatever order works best for your setup. It's easy to swap them out, so you can use this for different projects. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. If you want to build this project, be sure to check out the Learn Guide. If you have projects you'd like to share, check out the Adafruit Show & Tell livestream. All participants get a free vinyl sticker. You can also check out the Adafruit Discord server so you can chat with the community. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okay, and tune in to 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro every single Wednesday where you can learn how to make all this stuff. It's beginning to look a lot like Ada Box Mess. Uh, that's my song. Uh, <laughs> so this year, we have about 18 days left before Ada Box ships. Uh, that's Nikki, that's Biniam. You want to be like them, exchanging gifts and giving the gift of Ada Box. We have uh, only a few left. Before we and we close always off. run out. Always run out. Um, we'll be doing some cool promotions and previews soon. Um, I'm getting some of the graphics ready. You can see it's getting close. Oh, yeah. Adabot's ready. Blink is ready. Um, and the way it works is Adabox is a subscription service. You get it every quarter. Um, you get something fantastic. And then you'll get something that, you, that everyone wants. But usually Adabox 
folks get it first, so there's that fear of missing out thing, and you don't want to be sad, um, so be careful for that. And then I have a little video, but I just want to make sure folks know to go to adabox.com, and we also have a little uh, display here. I thought I would show this too. Here it is. Here's how many days are left. You have to go to adabox.com right now, because look at this. The so few days. Phone. So few hours. <laughs> and and, and that, all, that one also hits all three. If you're keeping track of her. <laughs> okay, so here is our little Adabox video. And uh, please sign up for Adabox because probably in a couple weeks it will be, not only the timeline will be over to sign up, but you'll also not be able to because we'll be full. So we're gonna do some musical cheering here. Yep. Are you ready, Lady Anna? Yes. All right. It's this. time for the new, 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 new. We got a short new this week. That's okay. Yeah. Still, okay. still well loved. New products. Okay. You're asking for it. We you got, got it. them. So we've got these quick slash Stemma QT cables, but uh, now they have sockets on the end, so you can plug them into headers, and they still have the classic JST SH four pin one millimeter pitch connector on the other end. Very handy. We've got uh, the male header version in stock now, as well as the socket header version. Also have a solder roll holder. We had one that had a soldering iron holder connected to it, but some people were like, well, I just want one for my plain solder, and uh, we have that as well. That's it. Very short thing this okay. week. Oh, it's correct. Okay, we're going to do some top secret. Okay. Um, from the vault. Uh, microchip already showed top secret, so thank you. Thank yep, you. We got, got that, you. we got that done. The first one is, this is um, the upcoming Pi Portal Titano. It has USB-C, it has a secure element chip, it has a screen, it has it's, a microchip chip on it. It's a 3.5 inch, 340 by 240 TFT. This it's, is everything, this is what you want. It's big, it's everything the chunkiest. Well, oh, we're, we're looking to make it even make it chunkier. You're, so I rarely say this, Lady Ada, you're wrong. I'm wrong. It's not the chunkiest. It's okay. It's the beefiest. It's got four beefs. And <laughs> and it's it's the beefiest. And I tweeted to Steakums, and you know what? They agreed. They blessed it. I'm not kidding. This is this is this is this is 2019 now. You, you can, can manipulate brands you can, on Twitter. You can tweak you can tweet to Steakums and say, "Is this the beefiest?" And, and they're like, say, "Yep." Yeah. So that's hap that's happening. <laughs> so, anyways, this would be really cool for for y'all because you have a screen. Yeah. You have a secure, secure element chip. Okay. It has a microchip chip. Okay. It has USB-C. Okay. Yeah, you can display stuff. It on does it. everything. It's like a mega Pi portal. Yeah. Wow. This yeah. is really. It does cool. everything. So and and, Steakums. I'm just saying. Got okay. the Steakums bus. Next up, uh, this is our STM32. This is coming out. We did this in partnership with DigiKey. So we do stuff with ST, we do stuff with DigiKey, and this is our newest board that'll be out when? Well, this is the up, only it's the, the updated, screen. but it's this the is but version. it's in the DigiKey store. It, it, Coming, yes, yeah. right now uh, we have a couple more in stock, but I know people want more. We sent a whole bunch over to DigiKey, so uh, we blogged about it and posted about it, but they are in stock there, and they even come with a quick connector on the end, so you can get one of these cables, plug it in, plug in your sensors, okay. and uh, more stuff uh, coming soon. I'm currently obsessed with Watchmen on HBO because it's really close to the comic and it's doing really good and Regina King's in it and she's got these new pixel goggles. She's got these new pixel goggles. We have a new pro a new project that we're doing. This is a preview. Um, Pedro is working on this. Philby did the code and you'll be able to have um, Sister Night goggles like in Watchmen. Or that, go to the rave. Or go to the rave. But you'll be able to do stuff like this uh, as well. So we're working on this. This is 
coming soon. A remake of a project that we did with Arduino. Now it's going to be in CircuitPython. Okay, let's do some questions. Then we'll get you out of here later. Oh, do you want to show the, the gizmo? Oh, you want to? Oh, wait, wait, you wait, wait. One. The vault is not closed. The vault's not closed. Well, you didn't close the vault. Um, we've got the <gasps> new e -Ink gizmo coming out soon. Uh, this is in CircuitPython, and it's great because it's unplugged and still displaying stuff. Yeah. So great when you want to have really low power displays that are uh, sunlight yeah. readable. For for microchip folks, that's one of the low power things we're doing too. So all the Pi portals you see, eventually they'll all have e-ink displays too oh, wow. if you want. So okay. then you can get stuff cool. online, beep, 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 and then it can turn off and it's fine. So this yeah. is yeah. coming soon. Yeah. Tri-color e-ink. Awesome. All right. This time really seriously for sure, go back in the vault. Okay. Are okay. you going to finish at 9.15? Yeah, we will. Zoomed. All right. So um, let's do some questions in Discord. Adafruit.it slash Discord. Um, we have a couple lined up. Okay. Lady, this one is for you since we just had that cable. Uh, is Jackdack support planned or in the works for CircuitPython? There's no plan, but if someone wants to make a library, um, we're happy to add it into the bundle. Okay. None of our sensors are Jackdack compatible, so. Okay, microchip folks, if someone wanted to get started with one of the boards that you showed, so I assume they mean that one, what, where would they go, what would they do? Um, you can go on microchip.com slash avr-iot for the avr-iot development boards. Okay. Um, do you, anywhere else? You yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you you can, can move your chair back oh, in now. Lady <laughs> Ada comes in when the product I just is, like get you. just got to no, get out good. of the way. You got to back up. Um, <laughs> so, uh, like Rachel said, we've got the 8 and 16 bit if you go on to the website microchip.com forward slash avr-iot. Um, and then if you want to check out the 32 bit board when that comes out, like we said, top secret. So. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Um, but that'll be out. I don't know what it'll be out next year. Okay. Um, and that'll probably either be on that same platform or it'll be on microchip.com forward slash IoT. So we've got a general IoT page and then an IoT page specifically dedicated to the boards that we currently have out. And we put tutorials on Hackster.io. That's right. So check yeah. those out. Okay. Um, lady, this one's for you. And then I'll skip around. Any news on the Pygamer Advance and or PyBadge case also... Where can I find the JST uh, PH to JST SH adapter? I was not able to find in store. So for the case, that was it's not out yet. Don't it's ask. It's not out. Don't ask. Yeah, the Pi Gamer Advance also not out. Don't ask. We do have a JST PH to JST SH uh, cable. Um, check back in a couple of weeks. It should probably be in the store by then. Okay, microchip folks. What was the event that they, that you mentioned? Is yeah. It, you have an event tomorrow. Where, where and when is it? So not tomorrow. No, okay. but we have uh, okay. next week. We'll be in Boston. And at, uh, oh shoot. Hardware Pioneers. Yes, Hard but. Hardware Pioneers? Okay. It's called, uh, oh shoot, I can't remember the name of it, but if you go into hard, Hardware Pioneers website, okay. um, they've got, they've got a, like I said, a great show. It's not just us, a lot of cool people are out showing kind of what they're doing in IoT. There's a bunch, bunch of cool startups okay. and stuff there. Um, and then early next year, and we'll be in Boston, and we're headed and kind of figuring out a couple other places. I know we're hoping to get to upstate New York at some point next year as well. Um, and that's microchip.com forward slash effortless design. So E E F F O R T L E S S design, D E S I G N. Um, and that's going to be a place where you can kind of put your information in. And if you want it in your location, let us know, and we'll try to make it happen. Okay. Okay. And someone posted up the avr-iot.com yeah. site. Yeah, so that works too, yeah. We have okay. two because that one's like kind of the getting started, like when you actually like plug it in, you go to that site. So. Okay. Uh, for JMK, we have the second display requested. You don't have to worry about that. But uh, I don't mind seeing that every week. <laughs> um, and I think unless I find another one. Okay, other people agree that this is beefy. <laughs> it is quite a beefy board. I'm just saying. Four times the beef. There was debate about this, and that's why I asked Steakums. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, well, what's when people think beef? Like, what do you um, okay, so let me make sure I got all the ones from the other chats. And if that's it, uh, we're going to do giveaways next week so we can get you out of here, Lady Ada. Okay. And we don't have a lot of giveaways. Yeah. Next time so we'll, we'll give away giveaways. something. Yeah, we're going to do giveaways next week. And next week we'll have something good to give away. Thank you, Cascade, for posting the... Um, URL. The URL for the design workshop. Thank yeah. you. Great, thank so you. Good. And with that, I want to say thank you very much, Rachel Absolutely. and Matt. Thanks thank for coming you. by. Thank you. Yeah. Um, please come back at, in at least March, but uh, maybe do some digital stuff. Bug us about uh, how we're doing these videos and things like that. I know a lot of people use your stuff, and it would be great to have 
um, yet another company or place for people to share their their projects mm -hmm. and more. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So thanks for coming out. Uh, we're gonna be here next week. We'll do uh, next week's prize will be extra special because we'll Ooh. give away two prizes. Yes. Um, if there's anything that y'all want to uh, have us give away at a future show, just uh, drop it in the mail. Okay. And we'll tell cool. folks watch the microchip show and hear some. St sometimes it happens. People will come on the show and they're, they'll, they'll be like, "Oh, cool. There was, you know, you can't give that away. I already asked for that. They said no. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, the little IoT board." Yeah. But um, if you have anything you want to send when you're doing events, let us know. We'll okay. give it away. On Great. The show. Sounds good. Um, we'll be here next week. Don't forget the code is microchip IoT. Special thanks to our team members that are running stuff behind the scenes. I think Jesse May is here. Thank you, Jesse May. Oh, no, it's Takara. Hi, Takara. Yeah, uh, Jesse May left and then Takara's in. Thank you, Takara. Um, thank you, all of our remote team members, all the different employees. Uh, thank you, all the customers that are going to use that code and keep this. Starship Aid Fruit Prize going. Thanks. And we'll see everybody next week. Here is your moment of Zener. Bye.